everybody thanks for watching so september the 11th is here a lot of people are you know waking up and looking at the uh tv looking at the media you know people are reading the papers those people who have access to one and looking at a lot of the destruction that these hurricanes have caused you got a lot of people putting out uh, videos and information about the other weather related you know activity around the world earthquakes or what have you a lot of people talking about where activity in the skies as far as uh, lightning and you know things that you know shouldn't be seen in the skies around this time of the year weird stuff it's a lot of information going out there a lot of people reporting a lot of stuff social media is really ablaze with information uh you know this day so you know a lot of people are just trying to think happy thoughts a lot of people are trying to you know trying to understand what's going on a lot of people want to believe what they are seeing as far as weather wise you know it's something that's normal you got a lot of people that's going to say well global warming is true Al Gore tried to warn us and you know a lot of people want to believe that this is something normal that we are seeing in America and it's just not true it's too much information out there now to prove otherwise and of course you're going to have people say you know Conspiracy theories, okay, here we go. Now the conspiracy theorists, yada, 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 same stuff. But the conspiracy theorists, so-called conspiracy, conspiracy theorists, have been right every time. Every single time. Whenever it's something major, you know, they have been right. To people who are willing to do the research and look further can see that, you know, what people are saying is actually true. You have some people who hear this information and they just, you know, they turn a blind eye and they walk away from it. Without doing any research, they reserve, they reserve what they feel about the information. You know, if they feel it's bullshit, that's, that's the way they're going to feel about it. And they'll continue with their life or what have you in ignorance. You know, a lot of people are ignorant about what's going on. A lot of people are not paying attention to the signs that they are clearly giving us as to what's going on. Put up a video on my Instagram about, you know, the homeless guy saying how he didn't want to go into a shelter because they got caught killing the people that was in there. Why would the news even air that? You have another news report about the lady talking about the people in another homeless shelter about how they are preparing them, you know, for New World Order. Just so happen to be talking about this stuff as we see storms, you know, destroying America through September the 11th. So these are all suspect things. You have commercials where you have all the presidents that's alive today do a commercial about the storms. That should tell you something. You have a lot of commercials coming up about the storms, a lot of, uh, you know, donations people want or asking for as far as, you know, helping people uh, through the storm or what have you. You have a lot of reports of people. Uh, another video I put up on my Facebook about the guy down in Houston talking about, you know, they're not using the money. They're not helping people. You have videos out there of them giving food to people, but they're not showing the videos of them charging people for the food. So. It's a lot of stuff going on. As I said, a lot of people reporting a lot of stuff. And it's really up to the people who are not being affected by these things to really process it and to, uh, you know, have a real opinion about it, you know, to really start thinking critically about what's going on. So we could talk about what's going to happen. And this is something that, you know, anybody who does research is going to, going to see. Since they have already begun, taxing and creating laws that deals with global warming we're going to see that amplified a lot more liberties are going to be taken a lot more things are going to be changed because of this weather attack and that's exactly what it was i don't care what anybody say you can call it what you want the information is out there so if everything going on we see the distractions already popping up you got videos surfacing of people breaking into uh, stores breaking into foot lockers stealing sneakers and the news media being conveniently out there to record the whole thing and, you know, put it on social media. And of course, you know, you got people saying, look at these niggas still in sneakers in the middle of a storm, you know, creating more separation, more arguments away from the facts. And, you know, this is really going to affect black people the most, especially, you know, in the South and uh, all of these areas where these storms have hit. When you just crunch the numbers, which they're already doing, looking at the fact that the damage is going to be in the billions. And you're going to have the majority of the people who have insurance. They have flood insurance because they can afford it. You have people who have the money to rebuild. You have people who have rich family members and, you know, rich people to help them out. 
And you have people who are just going to be screwed, homeless, lost everything. This is why so many, so many people choose to stay. So many people choose to stay and to defend, you know, their house against the storm and to just basically try to weather it out because they know if they lose it all, they might as well be dead. If the house goes, they might as well be gone. Even though we always say, you know, it's material stuff, you know, you lose it, you can get it all back, which is true, of course. Your life is, you know, more valuable than material possessions. But some people feel differently. Some people hold on to the fact that they work so hard to obtain, you know, a home car, you know, th their possessions that, you know, they feel like they're losing everything and it's going to be impossible to get it back if it's gone. So some people stay and it's really going to affect black people the most, of course, because a lot of black people just don't have insurance. A lot of black people uh, can't afford insurance. A lot of people uh, just have what they have. Some people live in places where it's not, you know, super luxurious, of course. It is what, they, what it is. They can afford what they can afford, but it's going to be destroyed and taken away from them along with everything that they work hard to get. And it's not going to be any real, you know, help for them. Millions of dollars donated to the Red Cross, you know, United Way and all these other so-called charities out there that are supposed to use the money to help people out. And you already have people coming out saying that they're not getting any help. Again, we talked about Haiti, uh, about how none of the money was really given to, to help the people in Haiti to rebuild. And they said the same thing again, you know, in Houston. Well, a lot of the money has seemed to disappear where you have a bunch of people standing there waiting for help that they're not going to get. Some people, you know, just wanted to stay and, and, and try to weather it out. And, you know, don't get me wrong, you know, I, I told a lot of people that I know down there to, to get out of there, to just go, not for the simple fact of the storm, but because if martial law is put into effect and you black, that's not a good thing. If they're going to have cops going door to door, you know, searching your home, if you have a weapon or who knows what they might do, you know, you never know what's going to happen. It's not worth it trying to get out of there. But some people are compelled to stay for many reasons. But it's really going to affect it's really going to affect black people. It's really going to affect the economy a lot. The dollar is already going down. And um, yeah, it's, it's definitely going to cause a big economic uh, uh, problem for a lot of people. And the money it's going to take to rebuild these places and the time it's going to take. So then you got to factor in where did all these people go that evacuated? Where did they go to? Is there enough money to help them out and to put them in a new situation and they're in a new place that they went to? You know. When can they return back to the South? When can they return back to Florida and start, you know, fixing things? Is it really worth, you know, fixing things? You know, what, what can we do to prevent uh, something from happen like this happening again? And it's just so many things you got to think about. A lot of people build um, their houses down in, you know, Louisiana, at the, uh, New Orleans, after the, um, you know, Hurricane Katrina above flood level. A lot of people build their houses on, you know, stilts up high to, protect from floods and things like that. So, you know, that takes money. That takes a lot of money. And and rebuilding is easy. You know, if you have the money, you can rebuild homes that can withstand winds of a certain speed, floods or what have you. So people can't just stay home if it's a storm and not worry about their houses, you know, blowing over because they can withstand, you know, those kind of, kinds of storms. That takes money. So this is something that was already put out there and people have already begun to build the models to withstand. And a lot of these a lot of these homes actually were built, but they are expensive. It takes money. So if the money is not being allocated to people who are really going to need it, then, you know, what's going to happen to them? And we're going to see a lot of problems with that. So here's the problem. You know, they own the news media. Powers that be own the media, plain and simple. They put out what they want to put out. They show you what they want to show you, plain and simple. So you're not getting real news. You're getting exactly what they want you to see. You're getting exactly what they want you to react to. So don't think that something made it onto the news day because they slipped up. It's on there to get you to react to it. It's on there to show you things. They own it. They know what they're doing. They are not stupid. Trust me. You may think we may have stumbled across something or figured something out. It was put there for you to figure out. Plain and simple. These people aren't, they ain't dumb. So 
you got to look at what we've been seeing and, and piece it together. One, this is the perfect, this is the perfect attack. It's perfect because you're just not going to have enough people believe that this is something other than a weather related incident, that this is natural. It's a natural disaster, but it's bound to happen. Global warming. You're not going to have anybody with any kind of real reach as far as news media to push, you know, harp to really push, you know, that this is an attack by our own government on the American people to basically wipe out poverty and, and uh, you know, homelessness, you know, in America, because that's what the reports are showing. One, that you have homeless people disappearing and the video I put on my Instagram, as I said, you have the homeless guy on the news talking about them getting caught killing homeless people. So. You know, you have people who are just not going to accept these things because they're going to want to think happy thoughts. And that's what people do when they don't want to accept something that's going to be really harmful to, to themselves, to their psyche. They want to, you know, make up excuses for it. People are thinking happy thoughts and thinking that, you know, because I'm not affected by this, I'm going to go back to my life. I go to work tomorrow. I want to do this. I want to do that. I don't have to deal with the shit. Happy thoughts. Not understanding that what these people are going through in the South is going to affect you eventually. It's coming. Trust me. So it's something we all need to be really actively engaged in. They can keep promoting, you know, J.J. Watt raising $30 million. Get the fuck out of here. We'll see how many people actually benefit from that $30 million. Really benefit. It takes billions of dollars. The thing is, one, how, how they get you. People are stupid. This is the government. You have every living president do a commercial about donating, about helping people, you know, you know, with the storm. It's the government. We have billions of dollars. If they wanted to fix it, they can fix it like that. If we can, with a stroke of a pen, write a check for $30 billion to give to, you know, uh, Israel, billions of dollars to give to these other countries, they can they could have fixed, you know, New Orleans fast. They could have fixed Detroit fast. Could have been fixed already. So don't let them sit there and tell you that donate your money to them so they can go do something when they could just do something. It's bullshit. And people are so stupid that they don't think like, well, why are we donating money? What are we donating money for? I never donate money to these people, ever. For what? And I, I hate to see the news media pushing for donations for the troops, homeless troops, help the veterans, homeless veterans, huh? Why ain't y'all down in, in front of Congress? You know, help people of Katrina, help the, the starving people. It's like, what? You know, why, why aren't we asking the people who make the laws to have the checks written out, the money printed to do something in America? Why aren't we there? getting this stuff done why are they asking poor people homeless people people don't make that much money why are they asking for donations it's the same excuse i give with the preacher it's the preacher the man claims he speaks to god and he he fills the holy spirit yet he's asking a congregation for money if you say you're talking to god you're talking to the holy spirit how come they ain't writing you a check bro how come you can't get a dime from them you gotta you gotta ask the people if the people don't give it to you if you don't get enough from them do you don't get what you're supposed to, what you need. You don't get what you're supposed to get, what you ask for. So why would we do the same thing with the government when these are the people who we elected, who have our money, trillions of dollars, to do with it what they're supposed to do with it as far as helping the people? There's no way Detroit should still look the way it look. There's no way New Orleans should still look the way it look. And it should not take long at all for them to clean up what's going on down in uh in the south so you have you know tampa bay the coastline gone it's like a fucking desert the water just gone i mean think about how powerful a storm has to be to do that and you know tourism is going to suffer businesses is going to suffer a lot of things is going to you know the economy is going to suffer because of this and it's all going to be how fast will the government react to fix these things and it's something you got to think about. It's going to affect a lot of stuff. We have a lot of uh, produce 
a lot of uh, fruits and vegetables that come from Florida, that come from the South, a lot of things are going to be affected. Business is going to be affected. And it's, it's crazy. And, and this is, again, another way that they can regulate stuff, that they can create new laws off of this to basically, you know, strip away more and more uh, liberties. I'm trying to figure out what is it going to take for people to wake up and start seeing shit for what it really is. A lot of people just don't want to get it. I mean, how much do you have to see for you to understand what has taken place and what's going on and what these people agenda really is and that it's not going to benefit you, especially if you're black? It's crazy how people just nonchalantly go about the rest of their life, you know, as if this stuff is just something that they don't have to worry about because it's not affecting them right away. You need to be engaged and think about what's going on, even by sharing a video. Don't have to be this one. Any one of these videos is people uh, that has people talking about what's going on and understanding what's going on. People are really trying to uh, express concern about what they are seeing, even though a lot of people don't have the knowledge about what's really going on. A lot of people have a feeling about, you know, something is wrong. Something is coming. This government is, is doing something. And as I keep saying, I've talked about many times how these are not Americans. It's people who are controlling this country are not Americans. They're not from here. They're not from America. And they do not have your best interest. They want the country. They want the world, for that matter. And their goal is to completely dismantle America. Everything, everything that they are doing is telling you that. Plain and simple. The, the moves that they are making... What they are doing, the separation that they are creating, the simple fact that they own all of the major corporations in the country, they own the news media, they own the politicians, they own the lobbyists, they own it all. And they are directing you in different directions so that you, you know, you move a certain way to allow them to fulfill their agenda. And everybody's arguing about stupid shit and, you know, we, it's just nothing is getting done. And we're seeing the bullshit from the government system and, and the, the country is not working right now. And you got people who just don't get it. It hasn't been working for a long time. Make America great again. When was America great? America has been trying to figure out and fix shit for, you know, over 100 years now. There has never been a time period, a time frame when things were great. You can go back to the 50s and say everything was fine. Yeah, if he was white. If you had money, if you had a job. It wasn't even right for white women back in the 50s. You know, so when was it ever right? When was it ever great? America was never great. It has never been great. It never will be great unless the people take it back from the people who are in control of it now. But we're so busy arguing about black and white that it's not ever going to happen. Not just that. People are too scared. People are too scared. You have to come in with a mindset of, you know, by any means. And a lot of people are scared. They don't want to be killed. They don't want to be hurt. They don't want, you know, conflict. A lot of people are not willing to act, to do anything. And a lot of people are just going to sit back and allow themselves to be killed. A lot of people are going to sit back and allow themselves to be oppressed. And just that's just the way it's going to be. And in the end, you know, they will win. They will, they will run it all. They will have their new world order. They will have their one world government. And you got to ask yourself, where will you be? You're either going to be dead and gone or you're going to be oppressed. You're going to be somewhere where you don't want to be. Uh, it's not too late. It is too late, but it's not. And unless something drastic happens on the part of the people, I'm talking about, you know, monumental, this shit is going to keep happening. It's nothing we're going to be able to do to stop it. Because again, as I always say, and this is not a shot at white people, it's just a simple fact. The people who can make the change will not because they are too busy holding on to racism, hatred. Talk about this here in Sweden, I was talking about this yesterday, about white Americans. And I was saying how white America can change the world. White America can change the world, but they won't because a lot of them hold on to the fact that, yeah, while we may not like some of the things that the government do, they seem to have the interests of the white man at heart. 
they seem to, you know, look out for white people. They seem to give white people, you know, certain benefits and privileges. And, you know, they can get away with some shit that, you know, we can't. They understand this deep down, as I said before. So they don't want to do anything because really deep down, they don't want to, they don't want to imagine what America could possibly be like without white control. It's not even about the fact that we would want, you know, a white person gone. It doesn't matter if they was Chinese, black or whoever, anybody that was, you know, controlling the country the way that these people are, that's, you know, oppressing the people. It don't matter. I don't care what they are. They, they, they have to go. They have to go. Do you think that the people that's going through oppression in Africa are trying not to get rid of these uh, leaders because they, they black because they African? No, they want these corrupt officials gone. They don't care that they African. It's the fact is they are, you know, harmful to their own people. So, again, so many people are just not going to let this sink in and, and come to the realization that there has to be change. There has to be something done about this government. And it's, it's not going to be easy. I said before, it's an easy way to do this stuff, but it's just going to take everybody doing it together. And there has to be a way to get out of this system collectively. And it is. Shut it down. Don't go to work. Don't do nothing. Don't do nothing. The one way protests will work is if everybody does it. And don't just go home after that. If everybody does it and that there is an agenda put forward behind it, that's going to force the politicians to act on the part of the people. So if you have the entire state, everybody in the state, the majority of the state, I should say, coming out in force saying, this is what we want, or we are not going back to work. We're not participating. We don't want these social security cards. We don't want this system. It has to change. That's what it's going to take. That's the only kind of protest that's actually going to work to where you force the politicians to listen to listen to the constituents in a town if everybody is out there protesting and saying this shit has to stop. 